everybody. This is Matt Orozco from Macabre Daily here, and I am so excited to be joined by Anik Blanc, who is the writer, director, and producer of a film debuting at South by Southwest this year, uh, Hunting Days. Anik, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. We just I just watched Hunting Days last night, and I feel like I have so many questions, um, but I don't know if we have enough time today to get to them and without going into spoilers. So I will keep my question, they keep some of them to myself, but um, to dive right into a few of them, I'm really curious to know what your inspiration for the film and the story was. And, and the reason I ask is because there's so much about the film that starts a certain way and really changes things on you. Um, you know, you kind of go into it expecting something like, oh, a survivalist thriller, person in a strange, stranger in a strange place, but it really isn't, it is that, but it isn't that. So I'm just curious, like, what, what were you thinking and, and what, what was your headspace when you were writing the story? Yeah, I wanted to point fingers at this uh, habit I feel we have as a society right now to just be enjoying daily life, continuing living as the world crumbles down around us and just like continuing to party, continuing to, 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 to enjoy just what we can and to just go on no matter what and uh, I wanted to question that and um, and have this woman uh, this strong woman kind of come in there and shake that world and uh, and try to change that and I I was like that was the other thing is that uh, with the me too movement that I support and all that we're talking a lot about victims and it is important to talk about it but I also wanted to show a woman that wasn't a victim and that was just uh, that was in a place of vulnerability but was not accepting it as a reason to become a victim and was fighting even when it looked like a lost cause so i guess it was my way to say keep fighting you know <laughs> and wake up to what's going on around you you know I, it's such an interesting point because it is um the cognitive dissonance and compartmentalization required to exist in today's world um of being able to not let what's happening around us stifle your ability to live your own life, but at the same time, not divorcing yourself from the realities of the world so that you can maintain your connection to it. It's, It certainly is a fine line to walk. And what I love about Hunting Days in particular is the group of men that Nina comes across. Um, initially, you're like, this has got to be the biggest, biggest group of bros I've ever seen in my, just elder bros I've ever seen. But in a way, there's almost this like adorable non-toxic masculinity to them that that is almost somewhat innocent in, in a way that that isn't kind of the things you would expect. So um I'm just I'm just more curious to know like how did you think about characterizing this group of men? And and was there any kind of people or friends you know that you were drawing inspiration from? Yes, for sure. Uh, I think what I wanted to show there is because individually they're all adorable and they have moral and they would probably follow their inner goodness but as a group they become um just uh funny yes but like they they kind of a uh, they become dangerous as a group you know because yeah. everything becomes a joke as a group and i really relied on my gang of friends of going into cottage uh, with my gang of friends and like the running gags that come and goes and that becomes repetitive and that allows you more and more to go into meaner jokes like this is just so a little joke but then we allow this one so we can go to this one and it becomes like kind of a we say in french like you you, you just kind of go further 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 and uh, that's why like they start there are adorable but as the movie goes it's not even their true self that reveal because their true self i think is good but it's the true self of the group that gets revealed which is then becomes coward and that uh yeah that becomes like individual it, it's funny because we think that we need to be together to feel powerful but i think that's when we because become the most coward is when we're part of a group in the end no, you, you definitely see a lot of the power dynamics tape shape. And, and particularly, I've never seen a group of people that are so bound by a very clear set of rules. Um, and I think that, that that set of rules, again, it, it the objective is probably to minimize the subjectivity of decision making. But at the same time, by doing so, you're also eliminating uh, kind of the emotion. And in some cases, some decisions they're making require you to have compassion and emotion 
Um, and so I think it's just interesting to see how those that set of rules is so fragile in that world, in the world you've built. Um, and, and speaking of that world, you know, one of the things that I think almost is a character within itself is the light location. And we've we've spoken to a lot of filmmakers from Canada, and you all are very blessed with like an abundance of unoccupied space where which can be quite beautiful. Um, also, you know, quite dire to live in. But I, I'm curious to know where did you film the where did you film Hunting Days, and what was it like to, you know, work in that kind of um, you know the foresty really um, cut off location. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is that uh, with the budget of the film, we couldn't go too far, but we <laughs> needed it to look very far. So we had to look, spend hours, hours on the road to find something two hours away from Montreal that looked like it was like eight hours away from Montreal. <laughs> so we really, really worked hard on that. And we found um, it, 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 we found like this place that had a lot of lichens and that had uh, cone trees mainly. In an area, it, it was basically a microclimate because all around is all uh, leaves. It was just this one place that was like that that we needed to find. So, and you you make it look like it's far, but as you're having thirty people going into a forest, you actually need it to be like the truck needs to be, uh, uh fifty meters away from where you actually close shoot by. it. Right? That's so much equipment to swap, and then if the actor need to pee, and then you need the 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 thing to keep them warm, and then the camera guy needs all this stuff. So in the end, like that was the the biggest challenge was to find stuff that looked like there was nothing else around, but that was very close to a road or very close to a house where we could go and heat up the chili for the dinner and uh, <laughs> and all that. And also, like I think that. Finding that road in the beginning, the film, I wanted to start a little bit like a Western, right? It starts with where you can see for a very, very, very long time. But that was the hardest to find, to find a road close to here that looks like it, it's just that there is no, you you notice that there is no um, electricity. Or anything. Exactly. I, no signs nowhere, no entrance. In the end, like it was very, very hard to find. And, but it was like starting the movie opening and it was one of the big signs that like they're at the end of the world, you know? So a lot of location scouting, I would say. A lot of location scouting. I think it all works in service of the film, right? It creates a sense of isolation, but at the same time, it's not a threatening isolation like we're typically given to expect in, in these films that it's, you know, the the, ter the terrain isn't the enemy. It's so much the people that are existing in the terrain that are making it more um, malicious. Um, and you know, I know you spent a lot of your time, um, particularly in in working in in production and in short films. And I'm curious what the transition was like for you going from short films to your first feature. It was long. <laughs> <laughs> it was long. I started to write this movie in 2011. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, then there was like uh, the writing took a while. Writing the first feature, I think, is something I wrote another one since then and it went quicker. There's something when you need to understand your own rhythm as an author, right? Because when you write a short, like it's 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 concise and what you need to do is the most concise so that it's good. But when you do a feature, you need digression. You need oh. to spend time. And that's, I think, the hardest to come up with because it's not... The, the 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 arrow right when you write it's just like an arrow it needs to get there but then like in a feature you kind of need to put everything around it to make it a real uh, a long a long form movie so the writing took a while and we did uh, and then there was also a pandemic a baby yeah. um, uh, the funding of the first feature making also such a, a film that is a mix of genre is often the hardest to finance because when you read it, yeah. it looks weird that it goes through so many emotions and so many styles because you don't have the actors to make you live it, right? You just read. And you're like, but what? Is, so the readers are often, but is it going to work? And I had made three shirts that were in that side. I'm like, I made it before. I can make it in a feature. But uh, the doubts are there because they're like, but what is this film? And I think that is what people like about the movie. It's like no other film. But on yeah. a script, it's harder to sell than once you've made it. But when you need the money is before you make it and you can prove <laughs> that it works, right? So that's the big challenge in there. So it was a, it, it's quite a challenge, but uh, 
but uh, we learned a lot and we've survived it. So we're happy we've made it on the other side. Yeah, I mean, and you've, you know, again, getting picked up for South by Southwest is, is, is no is no small accomplishment. So I think, you know, a major congratulations to you and the team on on that, because this will and certainly expand the access that people have to this film. Um, and I think above all, that's the hardest thing to get is just how do you get how do you scale access to your your art? Um, and, and we can I, I, the benefit too, because it's the kind of movie for South by. So it's exactly the branding we were hoping. And I think it's the right audience to go and meet, you know, people that are interested in genre, but that not only in pure genre that are, because that movie is not pure genre. At first we thought it was going to be more like being picked up in other film festivals that, that would like something like that. But in the end, like the festival that like it, it, it the most is the midnight or section where actually like we're like the kind of not 100 percent genre film that kind of is different than the rest of the programmation so that's nice it's like your criterion collection fans are kind of your 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 target market because they'll enjoy all genre but they'll look at it for the art and they're looking for something interesting and, and unique and i think that that's really what you get with hunting days is like you go into it with an assumption of what it's going to be you're consistently challenged by having to rechange change your expectation. And I think by the end of it, you're kind of left like, I'm not sure uh, entirely what what how to classify this. All I know is that was a really good story. Um, and I think that that's the, at the end of the day, what you're trying to go for. Um, I just have a couple other questions for you primarily, which is, um, you know, what did you, how did your production experience help you with, with kind of your feature film uh, approach? You know, I've, I've talked with other folks who've worked in the in you know in front of the camera and also behind the camera before kind of going into the director's chair so I'm curious to know like how your production experience kind of helped you or maybe even led you to this path yeah I think the biggest thing that it helped me was to uh cut your script if you don't have the budget way like <laughs> years and months in advance because sometimes the director they think when a producer tells them I think you have to cut. I don't think you have the money for that. They're like, yeah, but it's been so long. You don't know. You don't know. We know. We do budget as a, for a living. We know. Trust me. Don't go to wait till we have an, an assistant director do the schedule. I can feel it. I can see it, you know. So I knew that we had a very, very tight budget to do this. And we had a very little shooting day. And I accepted that way long in advance. So I did a lot of cuts. The movie, the, like the script, I think was like 60 pages and we were scared that it wasn't good, wasn't going to be 75 minutes if you do the one page per minute thing, you know, mm -hmm. but at the end it was a bit longer thanks to just uh, the way cinema goes. It's not true that it's one page per minute, but so I think that was what I know was to, to really, because I wanted to have the time to shoot each scene. It's a genre film. Each scene needs to live. They need to be perfect. They need to be um, a little story in itself. So I prefer to have less scenes, less stuff going on and to really concentrate the money on each scene and having the time to shoot it for the actors. I thought that there's so much going on in this movie that the characters living it like if it was real life, really intensely and realistically was what going to make it this work you know because yeah. otherwise you don't believe it because so much is going on and that was the toughest for the actors I was asking them like I know this scene doesn't make sense but act it like it makes sense to you like if it's real <laughs> life, how you react and it was tough for them but it works you know so um yeah so I I, I wanted to have the time with the actors the time with each scene so we had very little shooting days but we had enough time for each scene so I cut a lot of of pages in my script yeah, and I can only sure. I can only imagine the actors you know on the day you're shooting the scene with Dudos and um I forget the group the bachelor's name um but uh where he you know where he takes the drugs the first time and he can't see and it's like you know I uh, just trying to explain like how that is on a page I can only imagine trying to give direction against that but it, it works perfectly on the film but again, I'm sure the script was just totally different. Or... But a key element to that was to actually, uh, I because I, I'm a, I I love hypnotherapy. I do hypnotherapy, and this was kind of a written uh, with having some hypnotherapy session, having seen some stuff, not not having that happen to. And I had him. I proposed to him, "Do you want to do a hypnotherapy session?" 
And he said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. So um, I hooked him up with my friend that does it. And it was a, and I, I don't know what to, because it, it was personal. So I don't know what they did in the yeah. moment. And he, 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 I think he chose to experience it from within and he could connect back with, to that state during the scene. And it helped him a lot to do this hypnotherapy session. It, he told me after that it changed him uh, for life as an actor and as a human to have done wow. this therapy. Uh, session but wow. uh, I, think, I I don't think he could have made that scene as good if he hadn't accepted to go through that experience because I think he put himself back into that state to to play it it's funny that you're saying that I'm thinking back to the scene I'm like yeah there's definitely a moment of regression there that is um very psychological um so again you know you're right it doesn't work without the performances and I think it's a testament to the performances you got from these from this group of actors that they all bring something different. They all bring a personality to their character that is, again, you know, even have the one gentleman who's kind of naming them as archetypes, like this is this person and this is this kind of person, but they are kind of that. And and again, it works so well because Nina blends into that group in the strangest way. So um, my last question for you, Nick, is is going to be, you know, it's an, it's an interesting one is if you were to plan a double feature with Hunting Days, what is the movie that you would program before it? Oh my god. Oh my god, it's a tough question. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I would like I yeah, does it have to go before? Can I go before? No, it could go before? after. It can go after, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think because it was a big influence to the film and it, but it's in a different tone, but that's why I like to be the comedy before. So then you can dive more into the darkness. But I think the witch, <laughs> I would like uh, the witch because it's the same kind of, of gaslighting, psychological horror. You don't know if the if the mystical part is mystical or if it's just the the characters going cabin fever. Right. There's right. that. Uh, in there but I wouldn't like it's so well crafted I wouldn't like to play after it because then you really look like you're a bad movie so I prefer to go <laughs> before it and then we can have the masterpiece follow uh, because I really do think that was a such a well crafted uh, film but in the sense of a woman against establishment uh, and trying to strive in that when everybody thinks you're a witch um, uh, uh, and try to, man to, to, to to make you do what you don't want to do uh, I think is uh, with, and the cabin fever aspect of it I think they work well together and they're both finding their strength right they're both kind of finding their power through this experience um so I think that's a great programming feat, Double Bill. And and Nick, I want to thank you so much for the time and sharing a bit of the um, your insight on the film and and working on it. And just a reminder for everybody else that will be attending South by Southwest, it will premiere on March 9th. You'll be able to have chances to see it throughout the rest of the the following days. Um, Nick, we're so excited for for this experience for you. Um, we would say congratulations again on this inclusion at this uh, at South by Southwest and. Uh, we hope to hear, you know, more more from you in the future, whether it's genre or not. Um, exciting things to come, I hope. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. Bye-bye.